How easy is it to brainwash someone? Maybe easier than you might think, especially if you're very trusting of the person that you're with. They could do nothing wrong to possibly hurt you. That's a relationship between a lot of spouses where you'll go to the ends of the earth for the other. When it comes to Ruby Frankie and her husband, Kevin Frankie, is that what was going on? Was Kevin just following along, doing anything that he possibly could do to please his wife, to get his family back together. That's the argument that Kevin is making through his attorney right now, saying, I was brainwashed. I had no idea any of this was going on, and maybe he didn't. I don't know. But uh, to go to that extent, what's your thoughts on this, Siobhan Scott? Yeah, um, I sure don't think brainwashed is the right word. Is that possible? Perhaps in, in a situation where someone's been taken hostage and you've got the Stockholm syndrome going, you know, where they're under threat of death and they're indoctrinated over and over and over, you know, or in some kinds of cults like um, the People's Temple cult where everybody committed suicide at the you know, mm -hmm. direction. That sounds like brainwashing. What Kevin Frankie experienced, I think, is more, he's incredibly passive. Mm -hmm. And he let Ruby make all the big decisions regarding the kids. And that's more of a personality flaw on mm -hmm. his part. And I think the brainwashing is a very weak excuse. I wouldn't buy that for a second. Almost more like a toxic codependency, I, I would yeah. say, when it yeah. comes to yeah. looking at the dynamics of that relationship. That being said, uh, take brainwashing out of it. Uh, does he bear any responsibility in this whole situation if, in fact, he had no idea that the kids were being abused? Maybe in his mind he thought, uh, you know, she's out there with Jody. What could go wrong? They're going to be fine. Maybe he was shocked by just how yeah. horrible uh, things were. But, again, he is one of the parents. It He could step in at any time and say, hey, I want to see my kids. There's no order yeah. saying he couldn't go totally. check on them, but he chose to, to stay behind at the direction of Jody. Does that, uh, does that bear any responsibility on his part? It sure does morally, you know, morally and from a, you know, clinical situation of what is good for kids and having an attachment with their dad as well as their mom. Um, it's, a moral failing, mm -hmm. a deep moral failing. Is there legal grounds to hold him accountable? Probably not because he was not present. He very well may not have known the extent of how crazy things had gotten, but he had to know because he did live with her for so many years that Ruby had problems. I mean, we would like to think that there would be some kind of awareness of yep. this. And so, again, we don't know enough about his inner workings of his mind, what made him so passive. But I see it more as somebody who was just very comfortable giving up his power and giving up his control. And that led to some real failures as a parent and hurt these kids. Let's talk about that a little bit, because uh, Ruby obviously got some uh, got some Internet fame uh, out of her eight passengers youtube channel uh and uh, also uh, so did uh, uh her co-conspirator here um that was also involved jody hildebrandt uh and, and the term that was used and i know jody was a licensed therapist but the term that was also used from ruby was life coach um yeah. and that's a term that I, I i think a lot of people are having uh issue with and i know that's something that uh, that uh, Kevin is trying to get behind and say, we need to change something about this. Um, life coach doesn't really mean anything. Uh, there, there is no clinical definition. This is just kind of uh, somebody who wants to be a therapist who didn't take the education to do it and likes exactly. to talk to people. I'm exactly. sure there's, there's some that are nice, that are good, that probably some are do, nice. do have mm -hmm. you know some, some value. But a, a lot of them, not... Not so much, especially if you're you're going into wanting to get uh, get true help. Let's talk about that a little bit because that is a huge industry. How toxic is that industry, and how many other Jody Hildebrands are out there doing exactly this sort of thing? Maybe not abusing kids, but 
the psychological damage that they're able to inflict behind the title of life coach. That's yes, a scary thing. Yes. Yes, it's absolutely horrifying. And, you know, you could go create a website today and call it Tony's Abundance Academy. Mm -hmm. And for $5,000 and a couple of one hour webinars, you will certify people to be a life coach. Um, it's it's a scam. They're peddling snake oil with a lot of psychobabble that they'll mix in. And it's basically the quality of stuff that you could go find on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, it's horrifying that there's no government regulation for this but you know these things take off before the government has a chance to catch up with it and you're exactly right it's people who want to act like therapists and pretend in many cases that they're therapists because the general public often doesn't know the difference mm -hmm. but they don't want to get the education and have the experience because in order to be a licensed mental health clinician you need to have a master's or a PhD, right? So that's a lot of education. It has to be in the behavioral sciences because there is science behind what we do. There's very specific course content that allows you to be competent in evaluating people, diagnosing, coming up with treatment plans, understanding when there may be a brain disease going on so you make the appropriate referrals. These people have none of that. And it's horrifying. And then even after the degree, you have to have at least 3,000 hours of supervised experience doing therapy under the guidance of someone else who's your supervisor and goes over your work. And then you get to take the test to see if you're eligible to be licensed or not. Some states, I used to be an oral examiner for the state of California, you would sit down with a panel and they would give you right off the cuff a vignette of a case and you would have to develop a treatment plan mm -hmm. right there. You had like seven minutes to diagnose and do a treatment plan. So some states are very rigorous. Other states are less rigorous. Some states will crack down very quickly um, on a licensed therapist because it's a regulatory board that we have to be under their supervision forever as long as we're licensed. And some states will crack down very quickly on someone when there are complaints. Other states are much looser. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not aware of how strict Utah was, but it wouldn't surprise me that they weren't that strict. You know, in all likelihood, at, Jody was reported in 2012, I believe, for breaking confidentiality, which is a huge no-no. And it is very likely that in certain areas, she would have just lost her license then instead of, you know, she had a temporary stay on her license and had to go through some more ethics training and then got her license cleared again. But the other thing that happens that's so insidious with this, there are therapists who are deceptive and they've gotten in some kind of trouble because, you know, they're integrating tarot cards or something that's considered, okay, this is not behavioral science. And I do see that happening. And so then they'll have this other thing they do on the side. Well, I'm a therapist when I do this, but over here, I'm a life coach. And they're blending those things. But then this is the scam. They say, well, because I'm a life coach, I can do my channeling of dead spirits or I can do my tarot card readings or whatever. And we had a case here locally where somebody was saying they were a medium and incorporating this as part of their therapy work. And I'm sorry, <laughs> that's not behavioral science. Yeah. And in the state of Oregon, where I live right now, those... Um, we are required when we see somebody doing something unethical, we have to report it to the licensing board. Mm -hmm. And so that person has been reported to the licensing board and hopefully they will take action on that because that's that's simply not okay. I mean, it doesn't mean people can't be a medium or read tarot cards, but don't do it under sure. the guise of that this is psychotherapy because we have to have rigorous standards. It's just super important. It's there to protect the public. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see the standards you know, nationally, very rigorous. And maybe we have to retest every 10 years or something like that, even every five years, I would sign up for that, mm -hmm. you know, because not all therapists are equally competent, not all are equally intelligent. And we just want to make sure that first of all, we're doing no harm, but we want to do good in the world, right? That's sure. the whole purpose of the profession. 
And, and the, the thing is, it, 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 are you seeing that, you know, younger people getting into this, everything you just described, it's rigorous. It is very really rigorous, rigorous to get to where you want to go. Many, many years, many, many hours of work yeah. to get there. When they see the opening, they see, oh, so and so became a life coach. They got certified here. And yeah. my God, they're making just as much as someone yeah. who they went make more. through all of that. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's... yeah. Well, the ones that are good scammers make more. Sure. They're not all good scammers. Some of them pay the money, and and within three months they've figured out, okay, yeah. this is this is not real. But but I knew one that was making huge money in California, and he was channeling angels, life coach. And he would convince people for some ungodly, like 500 bucks a visit, that he, Angel Gabriel, was giving them messages through him. And the guy was raking in the dough, yeah. but he was a psychopath, you know, and yeah. he was just an expert at scamming, you know, desperate people. So I think it's really insidious. And, uh, you know, this is one thing that I talk about a lot is people... People are desperate. They want answers. They want a quick fix. And you have to be really careful when you're in that vulnerable state because there are scammers that will completely take advantage of you. But you're right. I have had clients who were life coaches that were lovely people and they really wanted to help, but they didn't want to get the education and put the time and the hours in. Mm -hmm. And you're also right. Young people are not going into this profession. You know, what did my kids go into? Technology, mm -hmm. right? and they're making four times the amount of income yeah. I have and they're done with work at 5 p.m. Whereas if you're a psychotherapist, you're on the clock, you yeah. know, all the time. And some people, you know, if they have a crisis in the middle of the night, our number one thing is prevent suicide, sure. prevent people from hurting other people. And so we tend to be very diligent about were there all the time. I remember my honeymoon 18 years ago, I had my pager with me and I had to take a call. You know, I only yeah. had a two, two night honeymoon because it was like, this is just the cost of the work. So I talked to a lot of young people who say, oh, I want to do what you do. I want to be a therapist. And I always say, let's have a talk about it because mm -hmm. this is not an easy life. And yeah. you need to understand that before you start. Sure. I mean, I'd say life coach would be almost the equivalent of uh, I played operation as a kid, and now I'm a surgeon. Uh, yeah. It's it's kind of along those lines. Yeah, exactly, 100%. It's, uh, it's scary uh, out there. What, I mean, what can be done in that world? I mean, obviously, you can outlaw the, world, the word life coach. I'm sure there could be something put into that. But isn't this something that is just going to keep cycling over and over? There's always going to be snake oil people who are going to have something. If you can't say you're a life coach, They'll come up with some other sort of title and just do the same thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's true. Just with, you know, faith healers and miracle things that, you know, cure cancer and mm -hmm. people fall for these scams all the time. Um, in some communities, district attorneys, if they find out that somebody is being really exploitative, I've seen district attorneys send a letter out and say, you know, stop what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um is that something that happens often? Probably not. And I think one of the biggest things we can do is keep talking about it, just yeah. like you're doing today, and shining the light on it. So, you know, I think some people who might have been sucked in will be educated and will say, maybe this isn't where I want to put, you know, $10,000. Sure. Or your life. Yeah. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you want more of our interview with our guest, be sure to check out our podcast, Hitting Killers with Tony Bruschi. Just search that wherever you download podcasts and press subscribe. Also, you can check out our YouTube channel for the full video version of the interviews as well. Under the same name, Hitting Killers with Tony Bruschi. Check it out, subscribe, binge, and enjoy. Thanks for watching.